Hello and thanks for joining us on Health Options. I am Rabi Abdullah. Originally designed to cater for the needs of women and children in Nigeria and the West African sub-region, the National Hospital opened its door to patients on the 11th of October 1999 when the first baby of female was delivered. It was later expanded for the vast majority of Nigerians to benefit from the services and modern equipment in the hospital. On this episode of Health Options, we shall beam our searchlight on how poised is the National Hospital Abuja for the nation's renewed impetus on repositioning health care delivery in the face of brain drain that has become a major factor responsible for the shortage of human resource for health. NOMA is a little-known fatal disease that is preventable and treatable. It affects the mouth and gums spreading rapidly, destroying facial tissues and bones. Medical experts say the deadly face-eating disease is spreading due to high prevalence of malnutrition in some parts of the country. Worrisome, isn't it? You will get to know about the sucker that has come the way of sufferers in the course of the program. Thanks for joining us. <music> If you're just joining us, this is Health Options, the program that not only tracks government's policies on health, but helps you with the information you need to make informed choices about your health. We begin with the rekindled hope in normal disease treatment. Take a look. According to the World Health Organization, Noma is a rapidly progressing form of gingivitis that destroys the soft tissues and bones of the mouth. It starts as a gum lesion that leads to the death of the cells in the mouth tissue. Often referred to as the face of poverty, this disease affects children from 2 to 6 years who are suffering from malnutrition, living in extreme poverty and have a weakened immune system. If undetected and untreated, NOMA is fatal in 90% of cases. Early detection of the disease can stop its progression through basic hygiene practices or antibiotics. On November 19, 2019, Nigeria marked her third National NOMA Day with a commitment to eliminate the disease by 2030. To increase access to quality treatment for children, NANI, a non-governmental organization, is working with the Ministry of Health to construct an 80-bed treatment center within the grounds of the National Hospital in Abuja. When finished in a few months, the new NOMA center will be a cutting-edge institution ready to welcome patients. The purpose of gathering here today is to say welcome to Health Action NOMA, now known as the Nigeria AIDS NOMA Initiative under whose auspices we are laying the foundation stone of the second NOMA treatment center in Nigeria, situated within the National Hospital Abuja. This place is central for ease of access to Nigerian NOMA patients referred from any part of our country. It also has the human resources, I have said you might need here, dental surgeons, you need maxillofacial surgeons, you need plastic surgeons, and you have all the specialists and specialties that you require to support this initiative. It will hopefully give more visibility to this disease that many of you do not know. The children who are treated here, they have to be here for several months, sometimes years, because it takes a long time between the surgeries for the kids to recover. And so that it's not just a hospital, it's also a children's home for the time when they are here, plus the relatives. Then in the end it will be like capacity for 80 children. And for the doctors, of course, there are spaces for, um, where the doctors can sleep in the first floor so they don't need to go to a hotel or something it's all inside there's a courtyard where the main courtyard where the children are playing so that they can feel like home the basic treatment will be given will be to patients with the normal disease and mainly here will be majorly a surgical center 
that will do facial reconstructions for these patients that come down with the Noma disease. The services are going to be given to the patients free of charge. We have block A, block B, block C and D. In block A here this is where the patient will come. This is where they will see doctors. In this ground floor we have both uh, two operating theaters in this ground floor block A. Upstairs we have residence. In block B we have the ward, we have the ICU where they can be seen into and then the same block B we have the free eating place. In block C we have the guest hostels. In block D we have the boys hostel and the parents hostel. Tapuja is a, is a very central place and secondly being within a hospital they will be able to get additional manpower you know from our own manpower you know where also uh, several diagnostic facilities we already have in the hospital as a super specialist hospital you know that so you know they, so they were impressed by what they saw and by the staff strength and facilities they saw and uh, the uh, another advantage is that being in central location it could easily be assessed from any part of the country and from any part of the world. Noma is actually being prevalent, like I said, in Nigeria, especially in the northeastern and northwestern parts of Nigeria, because Noma is also known as the face of poverty. It's now increasing because of the increased poverty in the land. Poverty that has been complicated by the terrorism now in Nigeria. Since we joined the Noma Regional Control Program in 2016, there has been an accelerated you know, work in Noma because we now have sponsors from uh, HICFAX and the WHO. We are concentrating on states that have high body. The Noma Treatment Center that's being built in Abuja is going to be a fantastic opportunity for families and children who have NOMA to get treatment in a quality assured environment with medical professionals who will make sure that they receive the adequate care that they have. To date, NOMA has been neglected in Nigeria and to have such a state-of-the-art facility within the grounds of the National Hospital will really highlight the plight of families who have children that have NOMA and it will provide them with a conducive environment to get the right treatment that they need. We hope that this will be a start against the disease. We've been in other countries before and it worked quite well. There are unfortunately a lot of children with the disease here and we are looking forward to start helping them. Timely recognition of normal disease averts deformity. In light of this, health workers and parents should bring their children to the center for treatment if they have suspected NOMA. The federal government should commit towards raising awareness on the disease and fully eliminating it from the country. Beyond awareness and treatment, it is critical that the root cause of NOMA is addressed, which is poverty. As long as most Nigerians in rural communities live below the poverty line, NOMA remains a threat. The new NOMA treatment center will soon provide treatment for NOMA survivors. NOMA is a neglected tropical disease and as such has not yet been recognized by the WHO. So by other advocates joining hands and highlighting the plight of children who have NOMA and ensuring that they come to Abuja for treatment will ensure that they get the care that they need so that NOMA no longer has to be a disease where families hide their children away but are able to get the recursive care that they need. Thank you to the people here who support us. Without them it wouldn't be possible to build a project like this. And of course the donors in Germany who give us the money and the trust that we are doing a good work here.
Joining me now as we focus on the National Hospital Abuja is the new Chief Medical Director of the hospital, a professor of neurosurgery, Muhammad Raji Mahmoud. Welcome to Health Options Prof. Thank you so much. Let's go straight to the point. Um, at the mention of the National Hospital, what comes to mind is tertiary care because it's, um, it's supposed to be a super specialist hospital. Will I be right to say that? Um, maybe let me just go ahead to push it further. Actually, it shouldn't be a tertiary care. It okay. should be quaternary care, where even it's poised to be an apex hospital in the country, where even tertiary hospitals should actually be able to refer patients to uh, that centralized location in the country as mm -hmm. an apex hospital. So that even if we have many uh, complicated cases, you may be able to pull in resources and uh, either human or financial or whatever it takes to really take care of that single individual that needs to be catered for in the country from wherever, whichever part of the country. I'm going to take you up on this because of um, you know, the perception in some quarters about the National Hospital. I'm sure you get my drift. Yeah, Let yeah. me just get down to the point or go straight to it. At the mention of National Hospital out there, it's very easy to hear someone say, oh, um, you take your patient there and the next thing you are bringing the cops home. What do you think is responsible for that perception? Are we the public that was not doing the right thing or it's about a hospital? What's the problem? Okay. Where did that ever even come from? Let me say it's a double barrel thing. One from the public. The public, um, they bring a patient that's completely moribund to the National Hospital. A patient would have started having some ailments maybe a year or two prior. But then he will have to first go to traditional healers, go to, by the time that is done, they go to a chemist around the corner in the, of, of uh, their neighborhood. And uh, that's not sorted. They then take this patient to a private hospital that is not well equipped. Mind you, there are some private hospitals that are quite good and equipped in the, uh, in the country. Um, so, but there are some that are actually not as good. Then uh, if that's the case, their cases are not sorted, they take them to other hospitals. So before they come to us, Actually, time has gone. The, by the time they present to us, they're actually quite bad. So you, and we are expected to perform miracles. Sometimes we do perform those miracles, but there are times when, um, I mean, you just have to succumb to, to, to um, the, the illness. So, um, so that's why. And when you go to virtually all tertiary hospitals, and like I'm trying to say now, quaternary hospital in National Hospital, you discover that a number of cases do die. But for the fact that National Hospital is in the eye of the nation, people keep talking about National Hospital. But every National Hospital you go to in the country, you have about the same scenario and about the same mortalities uh, that we, we, we do record here. But I would say that uh, Nigerian healthcare system, frankly, when you go to the tertiary and uh, hospitals, they're actually doing enormously well compared to um, what uh, uh, pe people say or what's expected of the facilities that we have on ground. Unfortunately, we in Nigeria, we don't celebrate the, the good news. There may be a hundred people that have come to National Hospital, are healed, are doing quite well. They don't speak out and we do not uh, publish that. And, but then that singular patient that has an issue becomes the person or the case that everybody talks about. Mm. So that's the perception we have all over the country. It's not only a national hospital once, it's a national hospital, that's what we see. Okay. So I think that perception needs to change and our own, uh, uh, the way we, we, we do things also need to change. Um, we need to collaborate with you people in the media a lot to really uh, say what we do and um, it's good for you to also come close to us and really see what we do day to day. Yes, and you see the heroic things a lot of us do. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we know uh, medical tourism, you know, uh, capital flight is an issue that uh, I'm sure uh, previous administration and I believe even the current one will want to you know, tackle, you know, at, as much as possible. And um, we know that there are procedures that individuals should even not take outside the country. And if we look at what some of the tertiary hospitals do, including your know, say is quite, uh, uh, what what do you call quaternary hospital, quaternary hospital <laughs> you level know, four, you uh, level four it. hospital, yes. you know, does in the country, um, believing in what we have, having confidence in what we have on ground, will go a long way. What will you be saying to Nigerians in that regard? I think we need to start having 
confidence in our own people. One, for us as healthcare, we need to also know how to do customer service. You, we need to uh, be responsive to our clients. Let me know, call the patient's clients in this regard. Yeah, you, um, uh, we need to know their worth. Okay, so uh, if, and then a lot of us take things for granted that patients are there, there's a pool of them. If one goes, there are a million others that would come. But we need to really individualize care in every, every single patient. That way they know that we care for them as individuals. So that will boost our image uh, in front of these patients. Then secondly, dedication is something that we also need to really, really work on. Um, like I said, a number of people are dedicated, but you still have one or two people that actually not, are not as dedicated. And this is not uh, an exclusive thing, problem of the healthcare system. It's all over. Uh, attitudinal. It's an attitudinal in the yeah. whole country. Yeah. So we need to change that, particularly in the healthcare system. So what we have, we need to um, really make full use of. Okay? There are equipments that need to be maintained, but we haven't really gotten into maintaining those equipment to really last a very long time. So that's why you see equipment supply today, give it a year, they're, yeah, they're broken down. So once we're able to sort that in-house within us, then it's uh, easier for people to have a lot of confidence uh, in us as patients. But I want to assure you and Nigerians that a number of the cases that are taken out there, that we have significant number of health experts in the country that can adequately take care of them. I think also we have this wrong perception uh, of advertisement uh, in healthcare. Um, there is a rule that says that as a medical doctor you should not advertise your expertise or you cannot advertise yourself. But I don't think the rule says that a hospital cannot advertise its services and its um, outcomes. So if hospitals are able to do that, it goes a long way in telling Nigerians that we can do this and uh, we will have much more people um, believing in us. Let's look at some of um, the procedures that you know, you're known for. I know the trauma center is uh, upper regulated. Um, cancer treatment, there was a time the radiotherapy machines were just not it. How are we doing with cancer treatment as it is now before I take you to another one that is springing up to be a sucker for sufferers, you know, I'm talking about another disease. Now, but let's talk about the ones I just took you up on now. Yes, um, in National Hospital, um, uh, when you're talking about uh, the trauma and cancer, these are the things that really um, are quite close to our hearts. Um, National Hospital as at today is about the only functional government facility that offers uh, 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 radiotherapy care uh, using the LINAC machine. There are a couple of other places that have the LINAC machines, we call them linear accelerators, which are some of the new equipment used in, in treatment of uh, radiotherapy treatment in cancer. Um, but despite the, we have a number of patients. Now, the one we have in National Hospital covers for the whole of the North because there is none absolutely functional in the, in, in the northern part of the country. It also caters for people from the south-south and caters for people from the southeast. So you can imagine the volume that we have trooping in for cancer treatment. Mm. And each day you go into that place, you would feel like crying, I assure you. I've been there. I've yes. been there. So I've seen that. Yes. So this is really eating up a lot of Nigerians. Um, unfortunately, we have about the lowest cost uh, per, per patient, per care. Okay, I wouldn't want to cut the amount. Mm. But despite that, you discover that a number of patients Can't cannot afford. even afford Can, that. Cannot afford Every it. single month, I waive millions of Naira, I assure you. One, because once they start, you cannot stop. Mm. If Just because of payments, they just, you just cannot say, we are human. You cannot just say, okay, because you cannot pay, we cannot continue. Um, there are also some certain government policies that have come in, which have subsidized treatment for some uh, cancer patients, some three categories of cancer. It is called Cancer Health Fund. Oh, okay, yeah. Yes, Cancer okay. Health Fund. So uh, that too is a subsidized means of uh, whatever. So uh, all this put together, you discover that the hospital really sometimes struggles to sustain uh, cancer care 
but we are trying our best. What about uh, yeah. renal care? You have the uh, trust fund for cancer. Is anybody doing anything about uh, kidney diseases uh, treatment? As I know there is a state government, I think Borno State Government, that at some point, either Borno or uh, Yobe, okay. that had given some grant okay. uh, for research into uh, kidney diseases. Okay. But as for the care itself, I am not so sure. But I think even if that's not available, a number of people have been hit by this disease. I think it's good that uh, something, something health fund should start. be. Okay. Exactly. Okay. I agree with you. Okay. And then you mentioned about the trauma care also. Mm -hmm. um, Niger National Hospital had the first level one national trauma center in the country and is still standing and working. Unfortunately, it has become a drain pipe for the hospital because trauma, just like cancer is, is also uh, it needs a lot of money and lots of resources to really care for that single individual. So when you, um, and then these people, by the time they come, you discover that maybe 50% of them are unknown. By the time you get to know the person, they don't even have the money to pay for, for care. So at the end of their treatment, and you cannot stop uh, halfway, at the end of the treatment you discover that also here you have to waive millions per month for several patients. So um, uh, I had to at some point bring this case up to, with the ministry to see how they could come to the rescue of the hospital because we have to use the mega IGR that we have in terms of generation revenue to cover for both cancer care and the uh, trauma, uh, trauma care, and that's really hurting uh, the hospital significantly. Yes, but yes. we are looking inwards and outwards so, to solve so this okay, problem. So what appeal would you like to make in that regard now? Just like to, you talked to about... To in Nigeria. Yeah. Just like, well, for, for either government or NGOs, I think it's important to develop this fund that we talked about, just like for renal care and cancer care. We should have another also for trauma. Because, I mean, nobody has, I mean, chooses to get involved in an, in, an, in a road traffic accident. It happens to everybody and it cuts across all care. Mm -hmm. um, I think it will help if we have such dedicated funds to solve some of these, uh, I mean, to be pumped into such facilities. Okay. Yes. Let, let's talk about normal disease. Something good is happening at the National Hospital. And um, I know that with time, all roads will lead to the National Hospital because of uh, the facility there. No, that is bringing up on normal disease. What's your take on that? It's a good initiative and I think it has to be supported. I know that they have done a very wonderful job in, in Sokoto. I visited the centre in Sokoto several years ago. Um, so now that they have moved to the centre of the country, um, we should offer them all the support that we should give. So that's why the National Hospital as well as the Ministry actually agreed to give them some uh, a piece of land yes. in uh, the National Hospital to build a very big center actually um, at the National Hospital. So um, it will, it's a big it will be a big relief by the time this is done for uh, all the sufferers of, and, of this and disease. And everything is free of charge? Yes, services, everything is free of charge. Services free exactly, of it's free of charge. Okay. So yes, but we have to commend the family that started that program. Mm -hmm. It's a German family that has started it, so I think the credit must go to them. Wow. Yes. So on a final note, talk to Nigerians about the confidence they should have. Especially, we, we have you as the new sheriff in town. You might want to just touch on what we should expect differently from the National Hospital. Well, um, what you should expect, uh, God willing, is uh, to have strengthening of uh, the systems in the National Hospital such that whoever it is that happens to be the sheriff in town, as you would say, whatever time, mm -hmm. uh, would have a system that will run smoothly, um, this, I mean, irrespective of who uh, at the is at the helm of affairs. And um, we would also, uh, we have pledged to really improve on our services, I assure Nigerians. And uh, we are also looking at expanding our and, um, and also maintaining our equipment that are bad and getting some more new ones uh, with the assistance of government and well uh, meaning Nigerians. And uh, so that way our services will expand and uh, the efficiency will be better. And it's our hope that uh, people, uh, capital flight moving out of the country will now be retained within the country. And the, the main target of 
uh, national hospital being a quaternary hospital by the grace of God would be realized in the next couple of years. Okay, we look forward to that. Thank you so much, Professor so Muhammad uh, Raji Mahmoud, CMD, National Hospital Abuja, for coming on Health Options. Thank you so much. All right. Right, yeah. This is where we conclude this episode of Health Options. A quick reminder that you can go to our YouTube channel to watch the uploads of these and other episodes of the program. Email us for your comments and contributions. I am Rabi Abdullah. Many thanks for watching. Do stay safe. visual arts has been believed to be the highest standard of artistic expressions. Artists make works that are purely created to be aesthetically pleasing, which distinguishes masters of art from other forms of art. These are works that have been with these masters and have recognized that in dealing with art particularly, when you're buying any stock of art, let me just say this, you're not buying the regular car, you're not buying the regular jet there, then you put it. This is something that has never fallen. There is no stock market that you find art has fallen. So it's always on the rise, and Nigeria is on the rise. The demand for Nigerian art, both locally and globally, has equipped the artists with necessary skills to create various forms of art. And for the masters, it also provided a significant cultural component to help them in communicating ideas, entertain and awaken our curiosity and emotions. Uh, it has to do with the Nigerian situation where we have the three major ethnic groups in the country, Hausa, Igbo and Yoruba. And the works, the work here represents three figures with three different colors. So as, as the artist, I chose blue color to suggest that the man in blue is the good and the man in red is the bad while the man with black dress is the ugly will you say the Igbo man is the one wearing the blue color or the red or black or vice versa the Hausa man or even the Yoruba man so the major idea is that we are very rich, but unfortunately we are not making good progress because we have the good, the bad, and the ugly within our society. is the network service of the NDA.